Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In last week's video, we talked about what emotions are and what they teach us. We talked about emotions being messengers and communicators for our bodies. But in today's video, I really wanted to go deeper and talk about how we can handle emotions, how we can regulate our emotions. So that's what I'm going to talk to you guys about today. It's going to be four key factors. Okay, so the first one is going to be a selection process and we'll get, we'll get to talking about all of these, what exactly they mean. The second one is a modification. The third one is a shift. And the last one is a change. So you're going to see these four factors playing a role in how we regulate our emotions. First, I kind of just wanted to dive a little bit deeper on how, again, that societal impacts how we think about emotions. So typically we try to avoid emotions, things like anger and sadness and frustration. And, you know, we do everything we can to not feel that way, to not feel into any of these. We numb ourselves with um, distractions. We numb ourselves with TV and alcohol and drugs and anything that we can do to just numb the pain. But I think that's a big misconception that people think that you can just Pretend like an emotion doesn't exist and it'll just eventually go away. But it always creeps up, whether it's days later, weeks later, months later, and years later. It will always come back and will always be with us if we don't internalize it and go through it and really feel into the process. So that's where things come into play with parents nowadays. Um, they're stuck, they're so stuck in their ways and their mindsets, but it's because of the way that they were parented when they were younger. You see a lot of people having that mindset going into parenting, well, emotional, emotional communication was a sign of weakness in my family. So that's what I'm going to, you know, instill into my child. Maybe, maybe they don't, maybe they want to change it. Maybe they want to say that, okay, I'm going to let my child be vulnerable and open and honest with me, but they don't really know how because they themselves haven't done it their whole lives. That's why we see so many um, problems in today's society with this generation growing up, things like anxiety, depression, even ADHD, they're all stemming from a common source. It's all because of things that haven't been fully gone through. You know, you're just, if you push an emotion to the side, it will always come back and you won't know how to deal with it. Your body won't know how to deal with it. Your mind won't know how to deal with it. So that's why we see this upcoming generation, this emotional lack, this emotional stunted growth, because it's things that are happening in the childhood that become stunted, whether it's from the parents, whether it's from society, it's, it's so many factors that play in this role. But if we can regulate and be able to cope and handle any kind of emotion that our body throws at us, and just to highlight on that point where we have become so single-mindedly narrowed in our thinking, um, I wanted to bring up an article that I saw today, a psychologist written article, okay? The title is Five Ways to Get Your Unwanted Emotions Under Control. And the subtag to that is that anger, disappointment, and frustration cannot be avoided, but they can be evaded. So they're saying that emotions can be escaped, avoided. Interesting. So emotions can't be erased, but they can be avoided. But how are we avoiding these emotions? What do we do to avoid these emotions? If we're not dealing with these emotions, what other problems are there arising? There is so much research and talk about things that developmentally is challenging for a child. Let's talk about children specifically. But what about their growth mindset? What about their emotional intelligence? What about things beyond research and science and all of those things put aside? What is missing? What is missing in all these things? What is the root cause of anxiety and depression? What is the root cause of all those things? Why is it becoming so prevalent? Why, where does anxiety even come from? And how can we deal with it? We talked so much last time about how emotions were so vital to every aspect of our life. You know, they help us communicate in relationships. They help us to be truthful and honest with ourselves and to others. They help us have a sense of empathy. They help us have a sense of self-esteem. You know, they're, they're there for us in every single scenario. Another important thing to keep in mind is that re regulation of the emotions helps us to be perceived as the person we want to be perceived. 
Whether you're reacting with a good or bad emotion, that's how people perceive you. But not a lot about what people talk about is how you in turn take that reaction. The study of emotions is not an exact science. And we know this because psychologists and doctors have been debating this for years, that we don't really know where emotions come from, but we do know how they are regulated. So I just wanted to quickly talk about James Gross, who is a psychologist who came out with this big research in 2001. And basically what he called the emotional regulation process was the modal process, or the modal model. So, so basically what that modal model looks like is when a situation grabs our attention and our attention gets a sort of a praise. Now the way we react to that appraise is our emotions and basically how we appraise our experiences. What internally do we decide if a situation was good or bad and how our body reacts to that? I just wanted to bring up a point because not all emotional responses need to require regulation. So if you're in a group of people and they're all laughing and you're laughing, that's not something that needs to be regulated because that's an appropriate response. But if you're in a group of people and a situation arises and you're not feeling the same way, maybe you're feeling a little anxious or nervous or angry or frustrated about something, that's something that you need to handle on your own. And that's something that you can't just avoid and put away. You need to do work on it. You need to think critically about it. Find out why that emotion is occurring and find out how you can deal with that emotion, what helps you cope with that emotion. And being open and honest and vulnerable with people, talking about your problems, being open about what will that really upset me instead of just letting it blow over. And that's something that doesn't just apply to, you know, when you're hanging out with a group of friends, it's with your spouse, it's with your kids, especially with your kids. Being vulnerable and open and honest teaches them to do the same. And I've talked about this in almost every single video. So if you're feeling a little confused about that topic, I urge you to go down and watch those videos on that. I'll be linking them below. But back to why we got here, I want to go over these four key factors because I think they are going to be really beneficial and have a lot of impact on this emotional journey for you. So the first factor I wanted to talk about was select, and by that I mean select a situation. So if you know your triggers and you know when your triggers occur, avoid those situations. So if you're someone that gets very angry about being late, and you hate when you have to rush and do things last minute, set extra time and make it so that you don't have to rush and you can take your time to do things. And I know that's easier said than done, but it's a work in process. It's something that you can over time fix. Just avoid any place where you know that you'll be triggered. So the second one I wanted to talk about was modify. And then again, that's modify your situation. So if you're someone that has high expectations at least for yourself, like myself, um, avoid situations that you know are outside of your ability to overcome or get done. So if you're cooking dinner for in-laws or your spouse or somebody, or if you're setting up the perfect party, don't overdo it and don't set these high expectations that you know at least right now you can't succeed. So setting expectations for yourself that you know you have the ability to meet is key here. If you want to not avoid that disappointment, but kind of knowing the way your body works and knowing that this is when you get disappointed, you can help yourself overcome that mentality. And if you're in a growth mindset, you can make little changes and little adjustments to that situation so that when you want to improve, you can make it a little bit outside your ability and then a little bit more, and then a little bit more until you're growing and you're getting better at something. So that's when change happens. Inevitably, there will be times where you fail and that's okay, but that's where growth happens. So modifying that situation to meet your needs and knowing your triggers, that's going to really help you deal with getting out of that pattern of thinking. So the third factor is shifting your focus. And what I mean by that is shifting your focus to things that you know really grab you emotionally at your core. So if you have certain issues that you know you're working on, say body issues, for example, shift your focus to something that isn't looking at that perfect person. Shifting your focus to somebody else in the room. Shifting your focus to anything else besides the thing that you know makes you the most upset. So I think a lot of the times this happens. It's not just, you know, someone in the room that looks great. It could be, you know, 
someone at the gym that lifts more weight than you. It could be, you know, someone in your painting class that paints better than you. Or, you know, someone you see on the street that has better style than you, shifting your focus to something that isn't going to make you feel like you're not enough. So the last thing I want to talk about is change, and that's change your thoughts. Now, I know that sounds a little bit dramatic because how can I stop thinking the way I'm thinking? I can't get these thoughts out of my head, right? But uncovering what drives your emotions to the deep, deep, deep core. Just taking a moment to reflect. If you're in a situation that you have, you know, these rages, you're feeling angry and frustrated and overwhelmed and anxious, but maybe that's not the real reason in that situation. Say your kid is screaming and they're throwing a tantrum and they're not listening to you and they're doing all these things and you're just getting angry. But maybe you're also thinking that there might be something deeper here. Why am I really angry? What's really bothering me? Finding out what is the root cause of that emotional drive. Another thing that goes along with that is changing your perspective. Looking at the bright side, looking at things with a sense of gratitude and joy rather than a sense of frustration and anger. So taking your situation and turning it into better, finding what's really bothering you, finding what's really bothering your child, being emotionally vulnerable and talking to them about things that are bothering you. Being able to regulate yourself helps to show them that they can regulate themselves. And it creates that communication open and honest communication for the two of you so that you can really get to the root things, not just overlying problems that you know you guys will never really address and will never really fix. It's getting to the root cause, finding the solution, finding a way to create that communication, an open and honest communication. So with that being said, I hope you guys got something out of this. I hope you guys enjoyed this and use some of these tools and see how they benefit you. I also just wanted to quickly announce that spots for my one-to-one -one have opened up. So if you'd like to sign up for a free consult, I will be linking that down below. As well, I have listed this on my blog channel, so you can go check that out. It's on my website, BridgetHallisey.com. I'll also leave that link down below. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.